Now then, you can electrolyze water at 1.23 uh, volts. You can electrolyze urea at 0.37 volts. So a 70% lower voltage, and that's fascinating. It's really easy to form an electrolysis cell that is very basic, but quite difficult to form one that's pretty efficient. And I came across this one. It was actually Nighthawk Light did this, and I thought it was actually really cool. He did water electrolysis, and I was thinking, hey, could we use that for you? You know what I mean about urea electrolysis because that is more energy efficient and for me far more interesting now what he did was use this it's an egg whisk and in that egg whisk he stuffed a stainless steel pan scourer and i thought what a clever way of making a large surface area electrode and that was the basics of what he made how simple is that if we stuck that in some urea and attached a couple of electrodes it would bubble off a mixture of hydrogen and nitrogen if we want to separate those gases, the best way to separate them is at the point in which they're created. So, he took a clear plastic bottle, and I've got this Winnie the Pooh drinks bottle. There's old Winnie with the balloon floating away, I thought it was most appropriate. If we stick that in there, then when the gas is formed, it's going to go up inside the bottle, and we can put a tube on there, and we'll have separation of gas. So to do that, we need to chop off the bottom, drill out the top, stuff this in here, and we get that, which is Exhibit A. And we need two of those. So here is our stainless steel pan scourer. So here is our stainless steel pan scourer stuck inside a stainless steel egg whisk. There's our cut off bottle. There's our bottle top with the handle of the egg whisk stuffed through the cap. What we need to do is this wire, which has been attached to the whisk there by twisting it on and putting on some solder. Feed that in. Feed the wire through. You'll notice there's a hole in the side. Feed it through the hole, and you get this. It's fed through the hole because this is where the discharge gas will come from and that's where we want to collect it so we can put a pipe on there and collect our gas. That goes to our power supply and I've bunged a whole load of hot glue on there to seal that hole but of course you could use butyl rubber, self-steel rubber tape, anything really that's going to seal that hole. When you've made two of those you're actually ready to go and you need to put it in some kind of container and we've got this food container that they rather nicely fit into. You'll notice a little loop in the bottom there that's so the electrolyte can pass. I could always just hang them off the bottom obviously in which case it wouldn't really matter but there is our food container. Now this remember separates the gas for you so the hydrogen comes off one side the nitrogen comes off the other. If you don't include this bottle then you'll get mixed gas out and you'll have to do something about sealing the top of here and putting in a uh, pipe into that whole thing but like this it doesn't really need a top. We're going to put a top on it because word about safety. I mean Safety. Well, I think that basically, if you don't know what you're doing, you really shouldn't be messing around with this stuff. If you are messing around with this stuff a lot, you already know what you're doing and know what the safety rules are. If you want to learn how to do it, you really should be reading. But you're going to be using a caustic soda solution filled with urine. So you really don't want to spill that on yourself for a number of reasons. One, it's socially inconvenient, and two, you'll get some pretty nasty burns. So it helps to put a top on the container, even though you don't need to. The other thing, of course, is it's hydrogen, which is amazingly explosive, and we all know that wild popping sound like a gunshot that it's going to make when we get some hydrogen. So do it in a well-ventilated room, put a bubbler on your output, and you're going to be Jim Dandy. But if you've never done it before, make sure you have a read around on the safety tips, because I tend to be a bit glib about them, and I'm telling you what to do, not what it is that I'm going to do. So don't follow me, follow the safety tips. Anyway, all we're going to do now is bung these in here, put a couple of holes, put that top on, although that's completely unnecessary, and then we're ready to go once you've mixed the electrolyte. Okay, so there's my electrolyte solution. Now in there I've got four litres of water and a third of a mole of urea. What that translates into in four litres is 80 grams. So there's 80 grams of urea, four litres of water. Now the potassium hydroxide can be anywhere between one and five moles. After five molar it begins to tail off, so you don't really want to uh, go above that. But as you increase the molar concentration, it's going to electrolyze more efficiently. Now that means in here there's uh, 1,120 grams of potassium hydroxide. So four litres of water, 80 grams of urea and 1,120 grams of KOH. Now we don't need to have a sealable lid on this, but it has got a sealable lid. And the reason we don't need a sealable lid is because it's all captured in these two bottles. We've got a sealable lid to prevent it spilling on us. Now as you add the KOH to this, it will heat up the water. And the electrolysis process also heats up the water. 
So though I'm using plastic, because I don't, don't plan on it uh, going too far, if you're going to do this, you might want to do it in glass if you do it as a long-term project. Okay, we're ready to go. We just need to connect that to electricity. Now, the hydrogen has a positive charge, so it's going to be attracted to the negative, and the negative is going to be the one that's spewing out hydrogen. The nitrogen is going to be spewed out by the positive, so we want to capture the stuff that comes out of the negative and basically just vent the positive. Now then, you run this at 1.4 volts, and that guarantees that it's only the uh, urea that's been electrolyzed. It's not the water, because with the internal resistance of the cell, it's lower than 1.23, so the water can't electrolyze. And what you'll see is it drawing about 50 milliamps or so, and that draw will go down, and when the uh, urea is exhausted, it won't draw anything at all, maybe a milliamp or two, something like that. So you can keep a check on how well it's actually generating hydrogen from the urea only. And of course, when it's exhausted, you chuck some more urea in there. But the thing that I really like about Nighthawk's design, actually, is the replaceability. Because, of course, these things wear out and they kind of get corroded. And once it's corroded, all you have to do is lift the lid, unscrew the bottle, take out your egg whisk and your scouring pad, and replace it with another egg whisk and scouring pad. So really easy to actually keep up to that and make sure that it doesn't get too corroded at any particular time. And if you're making more complicated ones, then it's quite hard to get those corroded plates out and replace them. With this one, it really is a piece of cake. I also liked how it separated the gas at the source. So here's my hydrogen, which is the negative, and there's my venting to the atmosphere for the nitrogen. So awesome design, very simple, very easy to make, loved it dearly, and I thought I'd replicate it for urea electrolysis instead of hydrogen electrolysis. Now, if I put this on at 1.4, it will begin to bubble and you'll see the, the nitrogen and the hydrogen being produced. Unfortunately, it isn't as dramatic as when you electrolyze the water. Because when you electrolyze the water, you get a ton of gas and it looks really cool. When you're electrolyzing the urea, you don't get so much. But the thing is, you have to store it because it is tremendously more efficient and it's also meant for things like cleaning up wastewater and it also is meant to use a huge resource that we essentially just flush away because of our social conditioning. Anyway, I thought I would do all of that. I thought I would show you how to build a cell, talk some more about urea electrolysis and what the conditions are. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please remember to like and subscribe.